Okay, Johnson is in equality. So Johnson's inequality says if <coughs> if uh, you have a function f of x that is convex, okay, that is convex, <coughs> and uh, uh, what is the meaning of uh, convex function mathematically? You know it from what do you call your calculus course that. You know, a function is convex if and only if uh, its second order derivative is non negative. Is non negative for all x. So, suppose you have a function x whose second order derivative is non negative, then, then expectation of f of x would be less than or equal to the f of expectation of, of x actually. Okay? Expectation of f of x would be less than or equal to f of expectation of x. <coughs> Why? So this inequality is called the Janssen's inequality. Why this inequality is interesting? There are lots of very interesting consequences of say this inequality. So what what are some of the you know what do you call um, um, uh, convex functions? So so for example, f of x equal to x square is a convex function because I know that its second order derivative is going to be two. So by this inequality, it says that expectation of f of x means x square is less than or equal to f of expectation of x. In other words, expectation of x whole square. So you get this interesting inequality that expectation of x square or the square root of expectation of x square is less than or equal to expectation of x. Now if I try to for example say you to prove this inequality directly, it's pretty much you know challenging inequality actually. Another convex function could be, for example, f of x equal to e to the x. Okay. <coughs> so, so f double prime of x would be again e to the x. Okay. Then by Janssen's inequality, you get something interesting. If I say you to compute, say, expectation of e power x, so this can be estimated by the f of e of x, in other words, e to the expectation of x. So what an interesting inequality you get about expectations by the Janssen's inequality. So we will see uh, in our um, uh, stochastic calculus course that there are different versions of Janssen's inequality. Okay? And, uh, uh, even you can generalize, you can have the Janssen's inequality, conditioned Janssen, Janssen's inequality actually, okay, which has a lot of very interesting consequences. So Janssen's inequality allows you to deduce a lot of very interesting kind of uh, inequalities about the expectations actually. Okay. <coughs> so let's prove this. So how can I prove it? <coughs> So, since f of x is convex, so it's two times differentiable, okay? So if it is two times differentiable, then I can also compute uh, differentiable at any point x. So I can also compute uh, its Taylor series around any point that I like actually, okay? So let's compute, compute the Taylor series, which is valid up to the second order derivatives, okay, Taylor series about a number that is mu equal to expectation of x actually. In other words, about x equal to mu, okay, about x equal to mu, where mu represents the expectation of x. <coughs> now, what is the Taylor series? So, the Taylor series is going to be so so if you want to for example compute 
the expectation of Taylor series of uh, say um, the um, uh, function around say x equal to a, so it is equal to f of a plus x minus a f prime of a plus x minus a square by 2 f double prime of a plus the residue term actually. Okay. Compute this Taylor expansion around x equal to mu. So wherever I have a I need to substitute mu. Mu, mu, mu. I'm giving a disclaimer that this, not a, this is not a precise proof actually. So there are lots of cheatings in it. But you know it's a, you know, a reasonable derivation actually. Okay. It's a reasonable derivation. <coughs> Uh, okay, so this is going to be, so this is residue term, f double prime of x i, therefore you have an equality, so here's a hit, so you have f double prime of eta, where eta is some number between x and mu, okay, between some number between x and mu. Now, since I know about this f double prime of eta is non-negative now since f double prime of eta is non-negative let me write it since f double prime of eta is non-negative by the way what we did <coughs> so we computed the Taylor expansion of f of x around x equal to mu so this is the formula so, so this is really the residue term actually, okay. this is the residue term, where the eta is a number between x and mu and f double prime of eta is a positive number actually. <coughs> and obviously this term is also non-negative. So I can say that this entire term is non-negative. This entire term is non-negative. So out of this sum, if I drop this sum, term, out of this sum, if I drop, for example, this term, I can say that then f of x is bigger than or equal to f of mu plus x minus mu f prime of mu. So if you take away one non-negative term, this will, so f, of, uh, so f of x will be bigger than or equal to the other side actually. <coughs> okay. And now, Instead of x, say if you substitute f of x, what you get? So instead of x, you substitute capital F of x. Okay? So this is going to be f of mu plus x minus mu and f prime of mu actually. And now take the expectation on both sides. So if I take the expectation of f of x, this is bigger than or equal to expectation of f of mu, which is uh, f of mu, not because it is a number, f prime of mu is a number, so it's going to be um, f prime of mu times the expectation of x minus mu, so I can write this as the expectation of x minus expectation of mu, which is mu actually. But expectation of x is exactly equal to the mu. Okay? You know this. So this means that this term will go away. And if this term will go away, what remains is what you require actually. That expectation of f of x is bigger than or equal to f, f of expectation of x. <coughs> and this completes the proof. Okay? So let me quickly review. So if f of x is a convex function, that is a function that whose second-order derivative is non-negative for all x, then expectation of f of x can be estimated by the f of expectation of x. And how we are going to do it? Since this function is two times differentiable, so it makes sense to, com to we can compute what you call uh, the Taylor series of this function up to say second-order derivative at any point x actually. So let's compute the Taylor series of say function f of x about a point x equal to mu, okay, about a point x equal to mu. <coughs> then 
f of x is really this f of mu plus x minus mu f prime of mu x minus mu square upon 2 and f double prime of eta actually. So this is approximation plus the residue term. This is residue term. Now I know where eta is the number between x and mu. Now I know about that uh, f double prime is always positive. So f double prime of mu is non-negative. So this term is non-negative. This is a square non-negative. So this entire term is non-negative. So if out of this sum, if you drop this term, if you take away this term, then f of x, which is equal to all three, sum, uh, three terms, is going to be bigger than or equal to what you call two terms. So if you drop this term, the equality will become inequality. And then in inequality, this inequality substitute, say, replace x by capital F of x, you get this inequality and then apply expectation. So expectation will take this expectation, uh, this term to zero, and you get expectation of f of x, what um, do you call, greater than or equal to f of expectation of x. So this is what you call, is really <coughs> the Jensen's inequality. So now, for example, let's 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 think of a little application of this uh, Jensen's inequality. Actually. Okay, it's, it's it's really a simple application, not difficult. So imagine we have a lady, and sh she has a choice to make. So she has some money, and she has she want to make an investment, and she has a choice to make two kind of in, uh, uh, what do you call investment actually. So she can make say a risk free investment okay risk free investment um, risk free investment like she can put her money in bank and and in bonds okay which say give her a return x actually okay so let's say x is the returns or the profit that she gets, for example, or say x represents the returns of um, of investment. Okay, and say m is the mean, the average returns actually. Okay, <clears throat> so if she decides to put her money in, say, she is, uh, in, in a risk-free venture. So she decides to put her money in bank, she decides to put her money in say bonds, from where she can get an average, for example, return, say M, okay, with probability one actually, with with probability, with probability one. So one possibility for uh, you know, her is that she make investment in a risk-free, uh, say for example, venture like bank and bonds, where she is guaranteed with the probability one that she gonna make what you call the uh, returns M. Okay, returns M. The other possibility is that she, for example, uh, invest her money into some risky assets actually. Okay. So maybe she can involve, invest in a stock actually, some some commodity, okay, like gold, uh, oil, something like that, where the prices always fluctuate and go up and down actually, okay. And say it is guaranteed that when she gonna invest, uh, uh, what do you call uh, her money into uh, into into say risky assets, okay. It is guaranteed that her returns are going to be x with with mean m actually. Okay. Here her returns are going to be n with the probability one, and here her returns are going to be x with the mean m actually. The question is where she should invest. So should she invest in a risk-free environment or should she invest in um, what do you call? Uh, in risky assets. The answer is 
that we need to look at her utility function actually. Okay? We need to look at her utility function. Function. So u of r, say u of r is her uh, utility function, utility function of revenue. Okay? So, there are two possibilities. If her utility function, okay, so the way she utilizes her money, okay, if her utility function is, say, convex actually, convex, okay, then, <coughs> then what is going to happen? The expected, um, uh, Level at the expectation of the utility function, okay. Ut expectation of the utility of uh, revenue is going to be less than or equal to by what do you call um, by Jensen's inequality. This would be less than or equal to f of um, uh, expectation of x, expectation of x, which is m, which is m. So if her utility function is convex, then this is going to be the case actually. And what should be done then? Then she must invest in a risky investment actually. So if, if her utility function satisfies this inequality, then she should go for, go for say risky investment. Okay? Because she has a good chance of making more money. Okay? And if her utility function, say u of r is concave, okay, what you call concave, that is you have that f double prime or u double prime of r is less than or equal to zero, then the opposite of this inequality would be true. In other words, then the expectation of u of x would be greater than or equal to uh, what do you call u of m and in this case she must do um, what do you call risk free risk free investment actually ok she must do risk free investment because the risk free investment is going to give her the better revenues, okay. uh, better returns actually. Okay. So this is, this is what is really one of the inequality, uh, one of the uh, consequence of the Jensen's inequality actually. <coughs>